Hey, here's my recap of my favorite Ladies of London, Season 1, Episode 6, New Alliances. So, interesting episode. We see a lot of character development and some kind of tragic events. So we open up the day after Mapperton. Everyone's waking up and stretching and getting preparing to leave when they discover that Caprice has checked out of the hotel and has left. Now, I don't really get why she did that. I mean, I get that she wanted to go home early, but why didn't she just like text Noel and be like, oh, I had the chance to go home early. I'll see you ladies back in London. It would have saved a lot of drama, which is probably exactly why she didn't bother doing it. So it is a reality show after all. So they're all sitting around and having a little cuddle in bed and talking about it. And Julia's like, that's so rude. I can't believe she did that. And Marissa's like, oh, well, you know, she is seven months pregnant and she's hormonal and she's tired. And Juliet's like, oh, well, I was super nice when I was pregnant. And Marissa's like, well, I would have liked to see that. And Juliet's all over Marissa for trying to be nice. And who are you, Mother Teresa? And, and, and by the way, I think there's a misunderstanding as to exactly what Mother Teresa is known for. And it, it probably wasn't trying to so much break up fights between friends as it was feed and clothe the hungry. But anyway, that is, we're getting off point here. So Juliet gets all over Marissa for trying to be nice. And, and of course, I'm super sad to see my Marissa get picked on. But it's probably good for her when it comes to casting to have some kind of tussles up with people. Especially Juliet, who certainly seems to get into fights with everyone. Anyway, all the girls go out to have breakfast, and Carol, Caroline's a makeup artist named something joins them, and he's like, oh, where's Caprice? And then all of a sudden Juliet's like, oh, she was, she's seven months pregnant and she's tired, so she, she probably left. Like, it's no big deal. Then she's like, cheers to Marissa, and Marissa's like, just gets up and leaves. She's like, no, gets up and leaves. So Juliet, it was it was wrong when Marissa said that Caprice was tired and leaving, but it's totally okay when Juliet says it at breakfast. So um, and clearly something in this has touched like a a, a button for Marissa because she gets really upset and she she leaves and Noel follows her and then Caroline follows her and she's just really over it with Juliet getting on her and she comes back to the table and she kind of confronts Juliet about how you know that hurt my feelings when you you know call me Mother Teresa you got in my face about that I, you know um, I don't really know what it is but you know how you can tell when someone is it's like a sensitive topic for it whatever reason this was a sensitive topic for Marissa but then Juliet starts crying about how upset she is that she's upset Marissa and then everyone's crying and I'm like why is Juliet crying? Like, I don't really get why she's so hurt. Anyway, everyone's crying, and they kind of, kind of sort of make up, and then go their separate ways. Now, we're going to catch up on Annabelle, who is three weeks away from racing with Mr. Fickle, her horse. And this makes me so nervous. When I was a kid, I loved, you know, running on the horses, and I had no fear. And the older I've gotten, the more scared I am. Uh, we live on a cattle ranch. I, you can't see it, but it's out there. And part of our job uh, is working on a cattle ranch, and one that I always do is helping to move the cattle from one huge, unbelievably huge pasture to another. And we do that. We put them out in spring. Throughout the summer, we move them around so there's always green pasture. And then in fall, we gather them all up. And it's one of my favorite jobs, but it's also super scary. And I always get nervous when I have to run on my horse. And I have a great horse. Harney's my buddy. Maybe I'll show him to you one day. But they are so incredibly dangerous. Horses are so dangerous. It's probably one of the most dangerous things people do. I'll get more to that in the future. So when you see her riding on a horse, it looks super easy. And it is like a million times scarier when you're on top of that horse. I can't even explain how scary it is. Especially because at any moment they could just stop. Like they could just stop or turn right or turn left. Anyway, enough about horses. So, um... Noelle and Scott have moved in together. They have this fight. She talks about... Oh, she... They move in together. They talk about... Hey! Sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, they, they talk about the fight. They tell Caprice about how upset the girls are that she left. I guess at some point she clarified that it was really Juliet and Caroline. Um, because later on, uh, Caprice makes a comment about Juliet and Caroline. Because I was like, Marissa wasn't in on this at all. Marissa gets her citizenship to the UK. Congratulations! Where are my dogs? Congratulations, 
Marissa, you're now a, a citizen proper. We catch up with Caroline in her office with her gorgeous jewelry. Oh, I'm so jealous. I wonder if they need a gemologist because I know someone who recently will be getting her degree in gem identification and gemology. So heads up, Caroline. Anyway, um, she sits down with Juliet and she's like, you need to calm down. You are just wound up with everyone. You're getting fights left and right and that's not how the British do it. We do it quietly behind closed doors, and I'm like, I, I maybe I'm British because they talk about how you don't really say things to people's face, you say it behind their back, and I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a certain blogger I know. Anyway, uh, let's see, Noelle has a, I called it a fundraiser in my notes, which is funny because of course it's not a fundraiser, it's a charity event. Fundraiser, that's tacky, that's what kids do on the side of the road when they wash cars. A charity event is what rich people do. So anyway, they had a charity event for uh, an AIDS vaccine for pregnant moms who are HIV positive to help the child who was born to be HIV negative. Super wonderful cause. Uh, Caroline manages to sneak in that she also has a charity, but they don't do charity events. I didn't think it was a big deal, but Noelle's like, oh, typical Caroline, trying to one-up each other. And I'm like, there's a lot of nuanced stuff I am totally missing about these interactions. So I don't know if everyone's just super sensitive or if there's more going on behind the scenes, but there you go. Definitely feelings are getting a little prickly between everyone. But Noelle wants to stay on Caroline's good side along with Caprice because she they both have successful businesses. Don't blame ya. I'd love to have a successful business. Um... Juliet shows up to the charity event. She's almost inside the door. She calls Marissa, you know, excuse me, can we go talk for a second? Marissa rushes outside. They do a big hug. Hopefully everything's okay. But I don't think it is. I don't think Juliet's really, she, I think she now has it in for Marissa. Because Caprice calls Marissa and says, would you throw my baby shower? Marissa says, oh, uh, at her restaurant. Can I have my baby shower at your restaurant? She says, okay. Uh, and will you plan it, I, I guess? Which is like, I don't think that's an etiquette thing. Like, I'm pretty sure that's one of those things that you're not supposed to ask people. I can get out my um, my etiquette book and check, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to ask people to give you a baby shower. But anyway, Marissa says, okay, calls Noelle, says, would you like to do it with me? Noelle says, of course. Um, Noelle mentions it to Caroline and Juliet, and Caroline's like, well, Caprice asked me to throw her the baby shower first, which we hadn't known. Everyone had assumed that Caroline had offered to throw a baby shower for Caprice, but she had it. So this whole baby shower thing is turning out to be a way bigger deal. And we kind of need to get to the bottom of this. We need to we need to find out what's happening. Like we need to. This is really important stuff. Um so let's see, and we finish up the episode with the scariest thing of all, which is Annabelle's racing, she's practicing. We don't really see what happened on camera. I don't know if the cameras were off or what. But we do see Julie going to visit her, and she is in bad shape. As she has uh, broken her pelvis. Just I have a friend here in the valley who just two weeks ago her horse went over straight backwards and landed on her and broke her pelvis in three spots, and it is no joke. When I say horses are dangerous, I can't even I can't I can't even tell you how dangerous they are. Um, and Annabelle's in really bad shape, and she's looking super rough, and it's really scary. People die all the time on horses. They're just, they, I, I, I love them, but they're super dangerous. So um, I'm guessing Annabelle does not race, and I really hope that she's okay. And I, I look forward to seeing the next episode and seeing how she is really doing, because she's clearly in a lot of pain, but we didn't get a lot of information this episode. Anyway, still one of my favorite shows that I am currently watching. I hope you will watch it with me. I hear it's on demand, so if you are behind, I think you can catch up. Okay, see ya.